Hardcore Iron Man, let's go. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hardcore Iron Man. A new boss has come out recently, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, the Phantom Muspa, and I really like to fight it on the Hardcore. It's got a lot of really good skilling supplies. It also has the Venator Bow, which might be pretty interesting for AFKing Slayer on here. Plus, the Ancient Icon makes a staff that actually gives a 5% damage bonus, which is better than anything I have. So, let's go do the prerequisites for this quest. We actually have to do Curse of the Empty Lord, and then the uh, other mini quest called the General Shadow, which might require me to go deep wieldy, but, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. And there we go. There's the mini quests we need done, I believe. That should be it. It doesn't really give you any notification that you finished it, but General Shadow done. And we should have all the prerequisites for Secrets of the North. Also, wow, this is really fancy. They got the storyline, the release here, and everything. Gotta give them credit. It looks nice. Oh boy, time for the first spooky boss fight of the quest. This guy can hit you big with poison. I think he always attacks whatever you're not praying, so... We'll see how it goes. I should be fine. I don't remember this being too hard, but then again, I also had, like, max melee when I did this before. Okay, yeah, no, that boss fight was really easy. I don't, I don't know why I remember it being harder the first time I did it, but that was that was pretty chill. All right, time for the fight with the quest version of the Muspa. This is a lot easier than the normal Muspa, and I've killed well over 300 of these on my main account. I'm going to do Tebow only, no magic gear switches, because my magic gear is honestly rather abysmal, and I'm pretty sure the Tebow will do better. We brought Thralls, and I also made over 400 Sapphire Bolts enchanted for draining the boss's prayer during the prayer phase. If you don't know anything about this fight... It's a fun fight. I definitely recommend doing the quest and unlocking this boss. Here we go. Secrets of the North Dawn. Look at that 60,000 agility XP. Mm. Mm -mwah. It is beautiful. And uh, 10 birdhouse runs worth of hunter XP. Very cool. But most importantly, we can now actually grind the new boss. I think I'm still going to stick to just the T-Bow method. It's going to be a little rough because I don't have an armadillo crossbow. That's way better for the smite phase because of its special attack. That gives you a chance to just completely obliterate the boss with the bolt spec since it doubles the chance of a bolt spec. But... We'll do without it. We're going to do at least a couple kills. I would love to get the Venator Bow, but mostly I just want that Ancient Icon and the big Toad Flex drop. I really want that drop. Real quick, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. In it, you can play more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in dynamic combined arms PvP battles. Every single vehicle is incredibly detailed and even modeled down to their individual components, which just leads to such a highly immersive experience. One of the greatest things about War Thunder is that it really allows you to play the way you want to. If you like fast-paced action, you can play just like that. However, if you're a little bit more tactical and want to play realistically, that works great as well. Not only that, but the game has one of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in all of gaming. No general hit points, the vehicles suffer actual damage to their components and crew instead. Their damage x-ray feature shows exactly what happens to you or to the enemy vehicle as it's damaged or destroyed. Another thing I really love but haven't mentioned is just how good this game looks. The graphics are incredible and show so much detail in 4K resolution. Resolution. I could just sit there and stare at the fire and smoke all day. So go play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description. You'll get yourself a large free bonus pack, which includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and much more. Thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into things. And on our first kill, look at that. We get the 2000 Ancient Essence, which is pretty lucky, and the Toad Flex drop. That's what I wanted. There it is. Two. 1,000 Ancient Essence, 74 Grimy Toad Flex. 74 Grimy Toad Flex. You know they did 74 instead of 73 for a reason. But yeah, that was a pretty chill kill. Wasn't too bad. Well, this kill felt like it might have been sub-3 minutes. Yep, there it is. Sub-3 minutes. There's the Charged Ice. That is just a pet transmog. Uh, nothing too insane. Nothing too lucky or anything. It's guaranteed it under 3 minutes. And we got it on our second kill, Tebow only. So yeah, what does this tell us, kids? Does it tell us that the boss isn't too hard? No, it tells us the Tebow is ridiculously overpowered. Oh yeah, I totally forgot one of the other massive reasons that I want to do this boss. You get this Ancient Essence every single kill, and if you get yourself 150,000 of this Ancient Essence, you can upgrade your Imbued Heart to the point where it is basically a Divine Potion, so it lasts at its full boost for 5 minutes and doesn't drain at all until the 5 minutes are over. And that is just insanely good, plus it ups the boost from a maximum of 10 depending on your uh, magic level up to 13 so it's pretty good and i would like to get it soon oh yes we got the most useless drop from this boss the frozen cash this beautiful bad boy replaces the essence and gives you basically just another random roll on the loot table this time we go okay never mind it's the best drop in the game we just got 10 renar seeds okay i'm sorry i'm sorry for talking smack it wasn't it wasn't deserved it's the best drop in the game 
another amazing drop from this boss dragon bolts unfinished and we keep getting the supply drop like seriously this trip is just never going to end except my inventory is going to get filled up here pretty shortly so we're going to have to leave anyways but yeah we are currently on a seven kill trip which is pretty good i can't lie this is going infinitely better than i thought it would another reason this boss is so good the alkables dragon plate skirt actually if you roll dragon plate legs you get three of them three of them even better than the herbs this boss drops for herb XP. Check this out. You can actually get free herb XP on an iron by picking up these ancient brews, mixing your ancient essence with them, and you get, look at that, 108 XP per uh, ancient brew that it drops. It makes it into a forgotten brew, which can be good if you don't have an imbued heart. Fortunately, I am lucky enough to have an imbued heart, so it doesn't really matter much to me. So I'm just going to turn these into free prayer XP, and I don't mind if it slows down my ancient essence grind just a little bit. If I can get a few hundred herb XP every now and then, that's perfect. And there it is, the three dragon plate legs drop. My god, that is so ridiculously gross. And honestly, my inventory is so full, I think I have to leave. I don't even I don't even think there's room for anything else. Let's go ahead and price check our first trip here at the Muspa, though. It was a 12-kill trip. Not bad, I'd say. 2.5 million GP. So for anyone who's wondering if this boss is still worth grinding, yeah, yeah, it is. Plus, the Venator Shard is still like 7 million gold, so... This boss is pretty insane for any kind of account right now. Okay, another frozen cache. What could this be? It's actually more rare to get the uniques from this thing. They originally said it was supposed to be more common, but now the data has been mined out uh, by Runelight and the wiki, and they say it's actually like 1 in 500 to get a shard, so these things are just silly. Black dehyde body. Wow. There's also a method to take no damage on the melee phase. Basically, all you have to do is make sure that he's stepping into you when he does his melee attack like that. And uh, he will always hit a zero. I don't know if you need to be praying melee or not, but I always do just in case. But yeah, check it out. Zero, zero, zero. When he would normally just be smashing like 20s or something like that. So another absolute god tier drop from this boss. 666 cannonballs. That cannot be overstated how good that is for irons. It takes absolutely forever to make these stupid cannonballs. And you just get like almost 700 of them. Just as a casual drop from this thing. Seriously, if you grind out the imbued heart, you will get like thousands upon thousands of these bad boys. Seriously, if you're not doing this boss on your Iron Man, you're missing out. Look at this. 31 grimy snapdragons. Alright, that's just 31 super restores. And 3 renar seeds. That's like almost 30 prayer potions. So I just got like 60 prayer restoring potions in one kill of this boss. I, I love this place. I want to stay here forever. Yes! There we go. 43 kill count. We got the ancient icon. Yes! Dude, that's the upgraded ancient staff. And there's a 5% damage bonus for all mage purposes in the future. So when we're barraging, we get a 5% bonus. Now, it's not as good as a Kodai, obviously. But it is better than a Master Wand, which means I don't have to grind Mage Training Arena until I get a Kodai Insignia. That is awesome. I'm going to stay at this boss for a little bit, though, because seriously... This is my favorite boss that's come out in a long time. I said it in my collection log video, but I love this boss. Another frozen cache. Oh boy, what will we get? Another black dehyde body. All right, this is the part where I uninstall old school runescape. No, no way. We actually just got the Venator Shard at 49. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? One kill off of 50. And we actually got a Venator Shard. That means we have the whole log done besides the pet, right? Let me check really quickly. Uh, Phantom Must, but there we go. Yep, just one more thing to get. Just the pet. Oh my gosh, that's disgusting. And there we go, 50 kill count at this boss. That is honestly a pretty amazing feat for me. I'm glad that we were able to just knock this out in one session. Like, really, this boss is so fun, it does not even feel like a grind for me. I'm just chilling here while doing it. So yeah, this is very... Very fun, as I've said about a hundred times, I'm sure, but I am now officially on the hardcore Iron Man high scores for the boss. I am the 25th person to get onto the high scores for this boss, so I got in before the second page was created. Pretty cool. All right, let me just log out of my hardcore Iron Man, refresh the page, and boom, there we are. Yeah, we are literally last place on the high scores, but we're on the high scores to begin with, which is pretty cool. The first place only has 300 kills, which is surprising to me. Um, and the only person I recognize on here is Praisefoot, who is an absolute gamer of a hardcore, by the way. I'm pretty sure this man has the Grandmaster tasks done on hardcore, which is just awesome. So, I'm definitely going to be doing this boss more. I think I could crack top 10 quite easily, maybe even just in one day. And I also feel like I need to mention something about the Venator Shard we just got. You need five of them to actually make the new Venator bow. I'm not really sure if it's useful anywhere, but I really do want to acquire one of those. You can also disassemble it, I think, with a chisel for 50,000 of these Ancient Essence, which would speed up us getting our upgrade. And imbued heart, but I kind of want to get the bow 
All right, time to get a massive gear upgrade. Let's use the ancient icon here on Eblis. Yo, Eblis, do you have any idea what this is? Fascinating. I'm going to tell you some cool lore, and you're just going to hold the space bar and skip over it. Do you know how long it took the Jagex writers to come up with this, you absolute disgusting human being? But that's okay. We've got the ancient scepter, which kind of looks bad right now, but they are working on a few things with it. They're trying to make it better. Also, a few things got data mined today. You see that little empty circle in the middle? You might think it's just because it's broken, but apparently there will be four little gems that you can fit into there to upgrade it somehow when Desert Treasure 2 comes out. Some people data mined and found it. So I'm very excited to see what those do. I assume they will upgrade each different style of magic, you know, blood, smoke, ice, and shadow. So that'll be really cool to see how it is. And as you can see, magic damage plus 5%. This thing also has 60 melee strength. So it's a pretty nutty melee weapon if you want to use it for that purpose. Uh, and yeah, it's my new go-to barrage weapon. Cool. I completely forgot about this up until now. Look at the XP drop. 170 prayer XP. And you're probably like, what? What am I what am I looking at? Yeah, Ectoplasmator, baby. You get 170 prayer XP every single kill at this boss if you bring the Ectoplasmator with you. Now it's not a lot, but it's something, okay? And when you're an Iron Man, you gotta take that prayer XP where you can get it. Also, if you have been enjoying the video so far, please do consider subscribing to the channel to help me reach my goal of 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you. This was like the slowest kill of all time. Plus, we got a frozen cache, which is always exciting. We could get something so cool in here. Wow, ancient essence. I'm glad I lost my ancient essence drop to get that. Anyways, 4 minutes and 17 seconds. We seriously did not hit above a 2 with the rune crossbow the entire prayer phase. That was a rough one. 100 kill count at the Muspa, and what more could I ask for at 100 kill count than some Herbler XP? Oh my gosh, I love these brews. You just pick them up, you make the potion, and you drop them. Like, seriously, I could go all the way from 0 to 99 Herbler here. I am really excited to see this kill time. This is my first kill of the day. And it was absolutely horrible. Oh, Toad Flex, though, to make up for it. That is nice. I hit zero on the melee phase over 25 times in a row. I was counting. And this kill was 5 minutes and 22 seconds. Okay. I might, I might try and bring a mage switch. That was really bad. That was horrible. So I've tried the mage and range method for a trip or two. And while the kills are much more consistently uh, two or three minutes somewhere in that range, I do get many less kills per trip. So I'm really not sure how worth it it is because the travel time to this boss is quite extreme. But I think I'm going to keep using this method at least for a little bit and see how it works out. It'll be much better once we get the imbued heart upgrade, which we are closing it on. We just need about 33,000 more essence. And once we get there, I bet this will be a lot better. All right, look at that 174 kill count. We get our second Vibra Venator Shard. And yeah, that's great. Two out of five. I'm really starting to question if I'm actually going to full on go for the bow. I mean, we are still lucky on shards. Sub 200 and we have two of them. And the loot from this boss is absolutely insane. Plus, we're only 9,000 essence off completing our imbued heart upgrade, which I'm super excited about. But man... This is just fun. I don't know. This boss is just fun, seriously. I want to know y'all's opinions on this. Let me know in a comment what you think about this boss. Am I only enjoying it because I have a twisted bow? P probably. Oh, yes. Look at this. Let's put away the loot from this trip and observe 150,000 ancient essence. I can I can find my imbued heart. It's in here somewhere. Where is it? Right there. And we can use the ancient essence on the imbued heart to make the saturated heart. You're going to want to see this animation. It's really cool. You put your hands in the air. You make a little storm cloud. Pew, 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 pew. You get 500 magic XP, and boom, it's like slightly uh, pinker now, as opposed to it was like out of a dark purple before. Now it's a light purple. Isn't that amazing? Also, just going off the high score kills on the hardcore Iron Man leaderboards, there's no way more than like maybe eight hardcores, including me, have this item. So it's a pretty prestigious, pretty rare item for hardcore Iron Man right now, and uh, I'm pretty happy to be one of the first 10 in the game to get it. I don't think I've ever gotten an item that quick after release. Okay, first kill with this gear setup feels like it went really well. Yeah, 236. That's a good amount faster than my usual kills are here with just the T-Bow method. Usually I'm getting like closer to around 330 every kill. So let's see. If we can really keep it at almost a minute faster, I think I'm just going to have to accept that we're going to have shorter trips because if, I mean, seriously, shaving a minute off each kill is probably worth the extra runs back here. And there's our new personal best, 2 minutes, 2 seconds, almost a sub 2 minute kill. Yeah, this is much better than Tebow only. The only problem is, yeah, I'm still getting only like 2 or 3 kill trips unless I get a supply drop. So that is a little bit unfortunate. I don't really know what else I can do besides just hope for a supply drop. I'm going to bring only 2 prayer pots this time. That's enough to last me 2 or 3 kills, and then if I get a supply drop, I get extra prayer pots. If I don't, well, then I'll probably be fine.
Oh, I almost didn't notice it. If it weren't for me having my loot tab open, I wouldn't have even seen it. There's 200 kill count at the Phantom Muspa, and uh, yeah, I'm still having fun. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to be going back to the strictly T-Bow method. Some of the recent kill times, like while some there are some really good ones, it's the same with the T-Bow. I think I calculated it out. I'm getting like 16 or 17 kills per hour with this method. With the T-Bow, I was getting 15. I can't really justify an extra kill per hour with this much effort, this much more banking, this many more supplies. This is kind of a pain, but we do have a frozen cache, which is going to be a Venator shard or maybe another Black Dehyde body. Oh! Chaos runes, cool. Well, some bad news. I think I'm going to be taking a break from Musk, but not that I'm not enjoying it anymore. It's an absolute pleasure of a boss to fight, but I just can't compete for the high scores, man. These gamers are too much for me. I'm going to secure my rank 5 spot that I have right now with, what are we at, 218 kills. I think that's pretty good. Rank 1's at 353 right now. They just went up 50 kills overnight, and I just I just have too much going on in real life to compete for that. So we'll take a rank 5 for now. I'll go for rank 1 at something else in the future, but I'm pretty proud of that. And, of course, the Muspa log is looking really good. We have two out of our five shards, and we have one of everything else. I cannot believe we've only gotten one icon. These are 1 in 50. We've gotten one of them in 218 kills. Kind of strange. Also going to throw up the normal loot that I got from Muspa on the screen, at least most of it. Check that out. 84 Renar seeds and 66 Torstal seeds. That is ridiculous. Seriously. I mean, I probably only did like 20-ish hours of Muspa. And in 20 hours to be getting 100 Renar seeds is pretty nutty as addition to all the other supply in addition to all the other supplies we got all those grimy toad flax what we get 444 of them over 150 snapdragon yeah if you're an iron man you're going to want to do this boss it's it's good and now a real quick peek at the alkables that we got from that boss in like 200 kills almost 12 mil worth of alkables i mean that is pretty good uh, it's obviously not as good as Hydra, but with all the other supplies you're getting, it kind of balances out. Now, Hydra is probably still overall the better boss to grind, but you do get Dragon Bolts from this boss, which is insanely useful at an immeasurable amount of places. So, yeah, I mean, I will take this. I'm pretty happy with that. Just came back to one of my old arch nemeses, the Hallowed Sepulchre. Uh, I figure it's probably a good idea for us to get the Ring of Endurance. It's a really good item for certain skilling things because when you have it charged with enough stamina doses, it actually lowers your run energy consumption even when you're not using stamina. So it's just a good thing in general. Anything you're doing that's not combat related, you want to be wearing that bad boy. We are currently at 160 Grand Hallowed Chests. I was at 150 when I started this grind. So I've done 10 runs and we are extremely close to the drop rate of the ring. I think every couple days or just whenever I'm feeling like it, I'm going to come here and just knock out a good amount of runs because I want that dang ring. So I've decided that my next really chill goal will be Winter Todd. I want to get to 20 million fire making XP. You guys know I'm going for 20 mil in every skill. And fire making is super easy. Look, we're getting a clean 332,000 XP per hour. I could be getting more than this, but I have gone AFK a few times without logging on, so it might actually be more than this. Nevertheless, I'm using the method where at the end of the game you hop to another winter tot world where the boss is at 60 percent health or higher and then you use fletching to make sure you get the 500 points this ensures that you get that 10,000 xp bonus at the end of the game way more frequently and it makes the xp per hour a lot faster and you could do several runs per inventory it's kind of nice i actually like it a lot more than regular winter tot it's making the boss kind of fun god i'm gonna i feel like i'm gonna regress saying those words that's gross you know, I just realized something, and it's rather embarrassing, but I've been doing all of this Winter Tot without a regen bracelet. I never made a regen bracelet on the hardcore, so let's cut this onyx real quick. Make an onyx bracelet, and I believe I have everything to enchant it. And boom, onyx regen bracelet. But yeah, basically this will make it so that I get doubled hit point regen, which stacks with the effect of the hit points cape slash max cape. So I will get 4 HP per minute as opposed to the two I was getting before. It doesn't sound like much, but it really does add up a lot at Winter Tot. All right, we are back at TOA. I That's my sixth kill count. Hopefully we can get the thread. That's what I want the most. Or the breach of the scarab. Obviously not a purple because this invocation level is so low. We only have like a 1 in 43 chance or something to get the purple. Come on, thread of Elodinus. Oh, potato cactus is good. Double roll on emeralds is absolutely horrible. I think I'm going to go cry myself to sleep after that one. And as you can tell, 28 minutes for a run at, I believe I'm at like raid level 185 or something pathetic like that. My gear sucks, man. My gear is miserable and I do not have a dex scroll, so it's pretty slow. Okay, it's official. I have a new favorite weapon in old school RuneScape. It's the Bone Dagger. I know a lot of you are probably like, what is this man talking about? The Bone Dagger. You have got to be the strangest person on the planet. Well, 
Yes, but also this thing is quite useful. Look at the special attack. It uses 75% of your spec, but it deals an attack with greatly increased accuracy that lowers target's defense level by the amount you hit. And a quirky little feature of this weapon is it always hits if you were not the last one to attack it. So basically, if for your first attack of the fight you use the Bone Dagger spec, it is a guaranteed hit. And this helped so much at Wardens and at Baba because the lower defense mattered a lot since I only have a Zamorakian Hosta. So anyways, let's see. It's a purple, right? I mean, I don't know. Not a purple, but what do we get this time? The thread of Elidinus, right? No, Renar seeds and blood essence, though. That's pretty spicy. Let me show you all the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in a TOA run. My trident has run out of charges mid run, and I didn't realize it until now. And so I have to let my thrall take out the entire first phase of the warden here because I have just no other magic weapons. So I'm just stuck here tagging it with a blowpipe every now and then, and then letting the thrall do the rest. This is horrible, man. And there we go. We actually finished the raid. I think I could take the title of first hardcore Iron Man to ever beat Wardens without a magic weapon. Let's let's say that's true. That's probably true. I can't imagine there are many more of them out there. If there are, you know, let me know. I'm very proud of you. 31 minute raid, and we get rewarded for that with a uh, Lily of the Sands and Toad Flex. That's, like, that's actually a really good chest. I will take that. Okay, I don't even know what to say. I love being an Iron Man. 16 Renar Seeds. And seven door stole seeds, what? Excuse me, ma'am. Ten kill count at TOA. If we don't get it now, we are officially dry. Whoops, I accidentally opened up my streaming software. Might have been a little lag there. No, we're dry. So unlucky. But actually, there is an anti-dry mechanic here. And that is, like, after you start going dry, the drop rate scales up to a maximum of triple the normal drop rate. So if I get all the way up to 15 kill count without getting it, the rate will be 1 in 3.3. .3. So... It's pretty hard to go super dry on the thread, but, you know, anything can happen. And there's 15 kill count, plus my new PB. It was such a good run. Going into the final phase of Wardens, it was sub-20 minutes. But the T-Bone noodled harder than I ever have at this boss. This should have been, like, a 22-minute raid, but it's okay because we got a purple now. But we did get the thread, right? Right? I mean, at this point, at this KC, the thread is a 1 in 3. It's a 1 in 3. We have to get it. It's a guaranteed drop, right? Right? Oh my goodness, finally the thread of Elidinus. <laughs> oh my god. It only took us 18 raids. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Uh, I wish I could tell you how dry that is. I mean, I know it's only 18 tombs of mascot. It's not actually insane. But it is totally pretty dry, assuming that it scales linearly starting at like one kill count. If it starts only at 10 kill count, then it's really not that dry. Probably only like two times the raid or whatever so let's empty our rune pouch and attach the thread of elidinus to it what maybe you need a needle oh come on okay i got out my needle game i hope you're happy you're attempting to use the thread to augment your rune pouch it's irreversible yeah that's fine and boom baby it looks so good i actually really love the uh Augmented rune pouch, the divine rune pouch. And look at that, four runes for one special. That's beautiful. And that means that a lot of content is going to be a little bit easier to do. Like if we decide to do Cow Fight Queen and do the crazy spellbook swap, Vengeance and Thralls method, which I will do once we get our Breach of the Scarab here from TOA. God knows how long that'll take because that's 1 in 180. No, I don't want to talk about the pain we're going to have to go through to get that. But I feel really good that we got the Divine Rune Pouch. Part of me wants to keep going until we get a purple, but like I might have already mentioned, our chance of getting a purple at this invocation with the current strats I'm doing is about 1 in 43, and that would require me to do 25 more raids. And I just don't know if I have that in me right now. And coming up any second now, once we hopefully can burn a few more logs without getting attacked. Please don't attack me. Yeah, 600 million total XP. That is beautiful. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I'd really like to get to 1 billion this year just to see that beautiful number with an extra digit on it. I know, it's a little silly. Well, folks, it's that time again. It's time to see satisfying big number happen. Here we go. Come on. 
19.999 turns into 20 million. There's another 20 million XP skill. Knocked out of the park. Amazing performance, I gotta say. I endured many hours of winter top for this. And uh, was it worth it? Maybe. There's a 2 and a 0 there, so my brain's happy. And what is our next 20 mil skill, you might be asking? I have no idea, dude. My friends, grab a drink. It's time to celebrate 70 million woodcutting XP. I know some might think that's pathetic, but it really just means that I've been doing a lot of bossing on my main account. So you should be proud. You should be happy. Go check out the collection log series. So I'm doing some clue scrolls right now, and I just did a wildy step, and I forgot to mention when I got it, but the Staff of the Dead is actually so insanely good for this account for wildy content in general. For those who don't know, it's special attack. It drains 100% of your special attack energy, but look at this. Reduce all melee damage you receive by 50% for the next minute while the staff remains equipped. So I throw this bad boy on, and a crystal shield. God, I really need to get a better shield. I pop this spec, boom, and half any melee damage that comes to me. So the only thing I really need to be worrying about is a uh, Bofa and maybe a Void Waker. I'm sorry, Karasi. Every time somebody says Void Waker, every PKer from back in the day cringes. I haven't done one of these in a little while, so random opening all the caskets I have in my bank. Yeah, I've been a little bit lazy recently on clues, as you could tell. I've had a lot of them sitting in there for a while, no, I don't want to talk about it. Easy clues, always amazing. Look at that steel pickaxe, that's pretty sweet. Medium clues are going to bust us out a new unique, the Ancient Miter. Back to back into the U-Short bow. Hard clues are always spicy. Rune Shield H5, I love seeing new uniques. And the Elite Clue. Oh! Oh, 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 what is a katana? Wait a minute, this is... <laughs> Now that's a collection log slot. I like to see. That's beautiful. Look at we are a true samurai. You even get the little sheath on the side. Oh my god, it looks so powerful. It looks so powerful. Look at that. <laughs> Wait, I just found out that's a collection log slot I don't have on my main account. I'm not as happy anymore. Ooh, baby, do we love hate to see this task. 128 Dagonoth on Water Birth. That means I can go do Dagonoth Kings, and I know what you're thinking, why are you doing Konar? It's because I'm about to subject myself to pain by doing Alchemical Hydra. We still need that dang claw. I want to get the claw, and then we can go to Chambers and actually complete the raid with relative ease, because the Dragonheart Lance is insane there. Then I can get Dex Scroll, and then I can actually kill things without using Eagle Eye like a massive noob, and I can stop getting bullied by the YouTube comments. So anyways, from Dagonoth Kings, I got a little sidetrack there. We still need the Warrior's Ring and the Mud Battle Staff for the Collection Log, and then I don't really think I'm going to come back here that much in the future. I mean, the pets are cool, but I don't really want them that badly. Ooh, I didn't have my replay buffer on, but I did something pretty neato. I just got the Elite Combat Test, Death to the Archer King. I killed uh, Dagonoth Supreme while under attack from every single other Dagonoth King. I was just prayer flicking, you know, you just get them off, uh, get them not to be hitting on the same tick, and then you just prayer flick them. I did get under half health, which is pretty spooky as a hardcore man, but luckily I brought along the Ancient Scepter, which is actually going to be so good. I'm going to use it to Blood Barrage Rex to get my health back, and it should give increased health, like 10% extra health back from Blood Barrages as compared to doing it with any other weapon, so let's try it out right now. Let's get my magic set up on. Let's throw on Blood Barrage, and here we go. Let's see the heals. Oh, yep, there we go. 53 up to 58 on a 22 hit. I don't notice any difference. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, baby, a Dragon Axe. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but it's actually so good on the hardcore because it means that I can recharge my Infernal Axe. Now, just one problem. Inventory space. Okay, after using it for a while longer, I gotta say, maybe this thing is actually pretty good. I don't know for sure if it's worth bringing to a DK's trip. But it's, it's pretty decent for healing, actually. It does heal you up really fast. And what is that juicy thing on the ground there? A Berserker ring. You know, I love to see it, but of course it is the wrong ring. I will take it, though. 2.67 mil. If I ever need some juicy bonds, I will drop that bad boy over. And another Dragon Axe to add to the collection. That's so good, man. That's a lot of Redwood time where I'll be getting very, very marginal amounts of fire-making XP. And that's exactly what I love to get. And there we go, baby, the Dagonoth King's task is complete. We're still missing those items that we're missing, but this was a pretty fruitful task. Look at that Berserker Ring, two Dragon Axes for charging my beautiful Infernal Axe. I cannot complain, plus 127 Dagonoth Bones for Prayer XP. You know, the Zami Hosta is also coming in clutch for tasks like this at Wyverns. Oh my gosh, I don't use my Defender, obviously, because wyverns but i'm still like never missing a hit it is so much more accurate here than the stupid tentacle that i've been using for god knows how long okay wait i just looked it up and their stab defense is exactly the same as their slash defense i don't know why this thing feels so much better here it's actually technically worse
And we get to feel the Ancient Scepter's power here on our first barrage task since we got it. It actually has that 5% magic damage bonus. I don't really know how much that equates to overall to our magic damage, you know, relative to how much we actually do normally. But it should be pretty good, especially on task. So I'd like to introduce you all to my new little side project on the hardcore here. I uh, gathered over 400,000 raw karambwanji. That's... <laughs> That's something I did. I don't want to talk about how long it took, but I do have over 400,000 Karambwanji. And we'll see exactly how long it takes to use all of it. In between every Karambwan trip, as you see, I'm going to be grabbing logs from my bank and turning them into planks at the POH. So hopefully we'll be able to bank an insane amount of construction XP over the course of this grind and a ridiculous amount of cooking XP. Uh, I haven't really done the math on exactly how many Karambwans I'll get from this, but it should be enough to get, I don't know, a lot of cooking XP. Okay, I'm going to start opening every Elite as we get it, and then just open all the other clues that I've done in the meantime, because Elites are always disappointing, so I want to do other clues with it. The Medium didn't give us Jack, but we did actually get Bandos Plate Legs. Wait, isn't that isn't that really good? Is there a stash unit that requires Bandos Plate Legs? I don't know. We also got Guthix Chaps. New collection log slot. I love to see it. And the Elite clue gets us... Uh, uh, there's a redeeming quality in here somewhere. I'm trying to find it. Okay, nope, I was wrong. It's actually the Bandos plate body you need, so, uh, you know, this is going in the POH. Well, I'm feeling a little bit randomly burnt out on a lot of the grinds that I'm doing right now, so I figure let's just do some random collection log stuff. That'll be fun. We're almost at 500 collection log slots, and I think that'd be pretty cool to pass over that soon. So let's just go do a couple little fun things that we have left in the log. First up, let's get a pair of bronze boots. You get these from cave crawlers at a rate of 1 in 128, I believe. Wow, it looks like somebody else here was actually killing cave crawlers not too long ago. Uh, I don't think I need protect from melee. I'm just going to put eagle eye on and uh, we'll slay them with the blowpipe. This should be pretty quick. I mean, seriously, I can kill these things in one or two hits with a blowpipe. So, Oh, wait, there it is. I don't know where they dropped. There they are. Bronze boots on the ground. It took us only 73 kills to get that. Very lucky. Look at that. Always lucky on YouTube luck. I'm not actually going to pick them up because I really do not have the bank space for that. But the next creature we're going to kill that drops iron boots is in the same dungeon. It is cockatrices. And the nice thing is they also drop the cockatrice head, which is a collection lock slot as well. Unfortunately, this is much more rare. I think it's 1 in 2,000, I believe. And the iron boots are only 1 in 128. Fortunately, the cockatrice do have one very redeeming quality, and that is that they also drop medium clue scrolls at a rate of 1 in 128. So I should get a lot of those on the way to the head. Don't think I'm going to grind out 2,000 of them today, but we should get a few medium clues. I also forgot to mention that they actually also drop the Mystic Boots Light, which are another collection log slots. These bad boys have three collection log slots you can get. They're so good for new collection loggers. Uh, I think the only Slayer creature that has more unique drops to it is the Worms, and those just, I don't want to talk about it, Worms, ugh. Oh yeah, baby, the first item we get is the Mystic Boots Light, which is a 1 in 512, I believe? So we actually got one of the more rare ones first. Uh, we still have not seen any of the Iron Boots yet, though. But honestly, if we get the Cockatrice Head before we get the Iron Boots, I would just be elated. That would be the best thing ever. And there they are, the Iron Boots! Let's go! That's two collection log slots here. I've killed 156 Cockatrice. And, uh, yeah, so we got pretty lucky on the Mystic and uh, slightly unlucky on the Iron Boots. I wouldn't even call it slightly unlucky. We're pretty much on rate. And now I decide... Do I want to stay here and go for the 1 in 1,000 cockatrice head? I really like that I can get medium clues from here. That's very exciting for me as somebody who still doesn't have ranger boots. Yes, I literally have 600 million XP on a maxed hardcore Iron Man, and I don't have ranger boots. It's embarrassing. Oh yeah, the second pair of iron boots. You know what I'd really like to see? I'd like to see a plug-in that tracks the uh, total number of items you've gathered in the collection log. Do you know what I mean? Like, so let's go for example go down to Zolra. You know, you'd get 65,535 points for the Zolra scales being maxed out, 6 for the Onyxes, 1,064 for the Teleports, and just see who has the most points in the collection log. I know that it's stupid and dumb, but it sounds kind of fun. Okay, now I'm just getting them so much. Look, the old pair is on, their, on the ground still, and we got the third pair of Iron Boots. One more point for the collection log. Dude! 
look at it on the ground. We actually got it at only 387. Well, technically 386 because I killed an extra one because I wasn't paying attention. Dude, we got the cockatrice head. That's three collection log slots from these bad boys. Uh, we only stayed long enough to get two medium clues, unfortunately. But hey, that is awesome. That is three new collection log slots. It's got us up to 482 slots in the log. And I figure as a celebration, let's open up those two medium caskets we've got from Cockatrice, which are extra lucky because, you know, when you do something weird like this, they get imbued with extra luck. Trust me, it's canon. You'll see. Um, Ancient Cloak. See? It was extra lucky. We got a collection log slot. All right, only one more pair of boots left until we've completed the Slayer boot collection, uh, besides the Dusk Mystic boots and the Dark Mystic boots. But I'll get those one day, okay? Have faith in me and the Ancient Slayer. Just shut up. We're doing the metal boots. All right, steel boots is all that's left. We're going to grab those from Harpy, Bug Swarms, also a 1 in 128. But I'm pretty sure as long as you have the little lamp you need to damage them, you can actually cannon these bad boys. Let's go see. Wait a minute, Harpy Bug Swarms also drop medium clues? This is awesome, but also terrible, because I was expecting to just kind of sit here in AFK until we got the steel boots. But now I gotta leave and do the clue, because I'm dedicated to the grind. And three seconds after returning, we get the steel boots. It has happened. It is done. We have completed one of the most difficult challenges in old school RuneScape. Clickbait it, throw it in the title. We have gotten every single boot. I mean, look how hard it was. Just to get one pair of bronze boots, I got 79 pair of rune and 93 pair of adamant. It, it, was, it, was an, it was a long struggle, and I hope you're all very proud of me. Okay, now time for a grind that I struggled with heavily on my main account. God knows how many years ago that was. I don't even remember when I started that collection log series. I feel old, but we're going for the flippers and the mud skipper hat. Mud skipper hat's like 1 in 25. The flippers are 1 in 64. I think it took me like 300 kills here to get the flippers on my main. Hopefully I get lucky on this count. We've been really lucky on everything so far here today. So I, I'm feeling the streak of luck continuing. So basically, you just throw your fishing explosives in the water for just for those who don't know. The moger comes out, and then you just kind of attack it. And the nice thing is you can set up a cannon here that will automatically cannon them when they come out of the water just to get a little bit of extra damage in. And uh, we should be able to kill them relatively quickly. And look at the spot. It actually is a double shot spot. I didn't realize I'd set it up perfectly. I'm kind of proud of myself. Oh my god, that's so lucky. We just got the flippers on like five kills, maybe six kills. And that's the really rare one. That's the one in 64. So now all we have is the one in 25 hat left. And the flippers are actually useful. This is probably an item that I should have gotten a while ago. But when you're underwater, it actually makes you able to go running speed. As opposed to usually you can only go walking speed. So it's pretty decent for a number of activities, including that underwater agility course thing. And uh, yeah, you can also do something really cool with these that I'm going to do when we get back to the bank after we get this hat. Y you should be really excited. And there we go. We got it in just 17 kills. We also got the mud skipper hat. Yay. I don't think this thing does anything that cool, to be honest. I think it's just a cute little piece of fashion skate. Let's put it on. Are y'all ready for this? <laughs> I don't think you're ready for this, man. Oh my god. It's actually so cute. Look at that. It's like a little froggy on your head. Aw. I love it. And then just to show y'all what the flippers look like, that is beautiful. But wait. There's something you can do to the flippers to make them even better. If you happen to have a duplicate pair of dark claws that you don't want, you can actually attach them to your flippers somehow. I'm going to have to look on the wiki. Okay, yes, yes, I remember. You have to come to Patchy on Mostly Harmless. And uh, he's got several pages because this is, this is actually the best place to get fashion scape in the game. You can combine, combine a number of items together to make some good stuff. Here, let us buy the dark flippers. Yes, I know the dark claws are going to be gone, but look at these bad boys. Look at that. It's like the stupidest looking item in the game. <laughs> Looks like you got cursed or some kind of gross infection on your feet. But yep, we own those now. Okay, I just figured out you can actually store the Mudskipper hat in your magical wardrobe. So there we go. We collected it for a reason. One day we'll totally fill this whole thing up because, yeah, totally. Moving on to another beautiful creature, the Infernal Mages. Something that I would be willing to bet most people have never seen heard of or killed in this game because why would you I, do they even get assigned as a slayer task i assume they do by somebody because it's in the slayer log but nevertheless here we are infernal mages they're actually really cool looking dudes i wish these robes were in the game they're super sick looking jagex please update it to make these guys drop this outfit plus they have red eyes and like green beards i don't know i love these guys anyways because i love them so much we are going to endlessly slaughter them because they have two unique drops in the collection log the mystic boots dark and the mystic hat dark both at a rate of one 
in 512, putting an effective rate of getting one or the other at two, 1 and 256. So it's not insanely rare to get a drop. They do have about 60 health each, so it's going to take quite a bit longer than the Cockatrices. But I think it'll be pretty fun. You know, I'm just going to chill and click on one of these fellers every few attacks. And the Blowpipe absolutely shreds anything with low defense, so let's do it. Also, they have a very rare drop of the Lava Battle Staff at 1 in 1,000, so if I get that, I am 100% I am allowed to scream and cry. No way. There's actually another dude logging in. He has the Slayer Helm on. He totally has an Infernal Mage Slayer task. Oh, wait. No, he's just he's just walking away. Ooh, baby, that's what I like to see. The Misket, Misket, the Misket Goots Bark. Yes, I like these things. The Mystic Boots Dark Collection Log Slot Unlocked. And these things are worth 100 thousand gold really hey shelby what are you doing at the bank did you did you give up did you go so dry that you gave up nerd ha <laughs> ha it's probably what you're thinking but no actually i got the drop i just uh so i got off for a little bit to go hang out with my son he wanted to watch a kids show that i wasn't particularly interested in so i thought why not kill these uh, little infernal mages for a bit and I got it on my second kill on mobile. It only took like 200-something kills to get both of these. So, the last piece of Mystic we need, not counting Dusk Mystic because, ew, is the Dark Mystic Gloves, which you get from Banshees or Twisted Banshees. It's twice as common from Twisted Banshees, but Twisted Banshees have like four times more health. So I think I'm just going to go to the Slayer Tower and just kill a ton of Banshees. It's 1 in 5, 12, so this is not going to be fun, but you got to do what you got to do. And there we go. There's the Mystic Gloves Dark. It took just about 400 kills kills to get these bad boys and look at that we've got the full mystic sets completed besides dusk mystic like i said we don't talk about that and i'm just really excited to keep filling out the slayer log like this has been absurdly fun uh a lot of these drops we do have to be on task to get or it's way more efficient to get on task so i don't think there's any more that i'm going to grind out right now except maybe the crawling hand it's one in 500 from crawling hands it's just another thing like the cockatrice head that you can stuff uh, maybe. We'll see how I'm feeling. Also, from that little grind, we made 800,000 gold in Alkables, and Banshees actually drop a decent amount of herbs. As you can see, we got 14 grimy Renars, so we made a good amount of prayer pods. It looks like they drop Renars more than almost anything else, which is pretty nice. So while we're sitting here blowpiping crawling hands, because that's what my life has come to, I would like to share something interesting that I found. I found a Reddit post by somebody who said their end game iron goal was to get lots on the Slayer Log for every Slayer creature. For those who don't know what the lots thing is, it's if you get over 65,000 something kills because it would overflow uh, the stack or the number. I don't remember what it's called. It's been a long time since I was in college. Don't judge me. Basically, the counter cannot go higher than 65,000 or so for Slayer creatures. And this person wanted to hit that limit for every single slayer creature which is an insane goal that i assume they never achieved because i just looked them up on the high scores and they're only 79 slayer so rest in peace to that dream but they did get 65,000 crawling hand kills and they showed their loot tab so i just want to share that on screen and say that uh that is a pretty interesting achievement also if you end up going for the crawling hand item go to this room here in the northwest it is way better than what i was doing it's a much smaller room it has way more crawling hands in it and it seems like it has a lot more of the smaller ones too which have marginally less health so Definitely do this room instead. Okay, come on. Give it to me. This is kill number 500. If we don't get it right now, we're officially dry. Oh my god, what happened to YouTube luck, man? Never lucky. Always dry. Disregard everything that just happened in the past 10 minutes of this video. Okay, I'm gonna go complain on Twitter. There we go, baby. The crawling hand at 889 kill count. Very strange that this is the item we go dry on, but that's okay. It wasn't even double dry. I will not complain at all. What are we looking at, like, on the Slayer section? 48 out of 73. We're getting really close to 50 items in here, which is super, super cool. Uh, and we have every stuffed item except for the Basilisk head, which I'll probably go for in the near future. But I want to take a break from killing these random Slayer creatures as fun as it's been. And we're only 10 items off having 500 slots in the collection log. So I think I have an idea. So nobody's ever heard of this section of the collection log. It's called the My Notes section. No, but for real, there's 26 collection log slots you can get here. And they are all just ancient pages that you can either get as drops from Mithril Dragons. Or you can get by searching these skeletons that are gathered on the floor around the ancient cavern which is by uh, Otto's grotto where you do barbarian fishing so basically the best strategy to gather these is to stand right here turn on the npc aggression plugin on rune light so you can see the outline and the timer so after 10 minutes all of these enemies in this square will become unaggressive and i'll be able to loot the skeleton there without being attacked 
Plus, if I stand in a very particular spot, I'll be able to world hop without being attacked by the enemy that spawns when you search a skeleton, making this very, very quick. You do take damage every time you search a skeleton, though, which is why I have an excessive amount of bruise and a couple car ones in my inventory. So uh, let's see how this goes. I want to just get at least maybe half the log filled out. Really, I just want to get to 500 right now. I'm probably not going to stay for the whole thing because you can get duplicates of these pages. So it can take an extremely long time to get your last few. Oh my god, I waited the whole 10 minutes for nothing. I forgot. You actually have to come over here and move the aggression zone because this is the safe spot right here and it's just outside of the default aggression zone. So you have to walk down there, push it this way, and then come up and wait 10 minutes. So here we go. 10 more minutes of sitting here doing nothing, baby. And there it is, my friends. 500 collection log slots on the hardcore iron man and how many of my notes was that 10 out of 26 i think i'll just go until i'm out of bruise you take so much damage here seriously it's kind of scary i'm almost like afraid i'm gonna lose my status to something really stupid like this so i've been paranoidly sitting here my heart beating it wait did we just get back to back what the okay that's insane luck we've been really dry for that when we just got there so yeah I'll finish the inventory. I'm not going to stay here till the log's done. But yay, 500 collection log slots. Woo! Well, that's enough of that for me. We went on a pretty lucky streak there at the end and got up to 505 total slots. Filled in 15 out of 26 in the My Notes section. I'm pretty happy with that, man. Our collection log number is looking a lot better. Sorry about this inventory viewer. Also, this is really good for gathering mangled bones. There's an elite clue step, I think it is. Maybe it's master, but elite or master step where you need to burn mangled bones. So now we have a ton of those. And now it's time to explain what my next big AFK uh, collection logging will be, and that's the monkey backpacks. To get all of these, you need 6,000 laps at the Apatol Agility course, which you need to be a monkey to do, obviously. And once you uh, hit the milestones, you come here to the... Wow, okay. You come here to the Demonic Gorilla Caves, you search one of these crates, and you get yourself a little monkey. Now, you can wear them on your back. It's very cute, but even better, if you've done a certain amount of laps, you can transform them. So first up, we've got the Karamja monkey which you can wear, which is really cute. And it's a collection log slot every time you transform them for the first time, and I've already done 500 laps. So let's just claim our three collection log slots. The zombie monkey, also very cute. And now the maniacal monkey, which is absolutely adorable with his little hat. I love it. And the remaining milestones, I believe, are for 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 laps. So we've got a lot of agility ahead of us, but that's okay, because, I mean, at least you're gaining agility XP, which is one of the most questionable skills in the game. And now for something you've all been waiting for. I've been getting so many requests for this. It's been filling up my inbox. My uh, PO box is full of letters just begging me to do this. So I will, of course, just for you guys, I will go for the fish sack again on the hardcore iron man so here we go we have nothing in this log at all i don't even know if i've done aerial fishing on the hardcore iron man but we are going to fetch the bird from alry the angler and we're gonna start uh what is it because i'm wearing gloves is it not like when i wear gloves uh okay there we go we've got the bird so here's angler fishing aerial fishing you just throw your bird into the water and it catches little fishies you want to try and get the ones that are really close to land you know these ones catch the fastest it's like a one tick catch and then you can throw it right back in and it's super quick and it's actually really good xp as you guys can see it's it's really really nice the only downside is i am going to have to spend a lot of time just cutting these fish up to get fish chunks which is the bait that you use and so it's not going to be very chill for a while but once i cut up a couple thousand of these it'll be much more chill and yeah it's very click intensive but as you can see seriously the xp is pretty darn nice especially when you catch the good ones uh and if there's another person uh fishing here it's actually better to use a world that has another person because it makes the good spots respawn faster since the spots are island wide and not just by you i hope that made sense because i feel like i've just been rambling and nothing i've said makes any sense all right we've been here for over 7,000 fishing xp and we finally got our first mulch pearl I don't remember if they're that rare. I'm pretty sure when you have 99 in both skills, it scales up. You know, I'm going to check the wiki before I say that because I could just put it on screen in editing, but I don't want to feel like an idiot. Okay, it scales based on hunter and fishing, and at 99 in both, you have a 1 in 75 chance to get a mulch pearl, which uh, it's pretty rare, as you could tell. You know, I mean, I, I am getting some of these relatively quickly, but you are not going to be grinding mulch pearls out at a massive rate here. It is going to be, if I remember correctly, when I did mine on the main account, I think I was getting like maybe 20 an hour or something. And this is obviously not what the kids would call AFK. So it's very intense, very click intensive, especially when you have to cut the fish. So you either cut it or you drop it. And uh, this is my life now. I guess I'm going to have to spend like 50 plus hours. Oh, I haven't even mentioned how many mulch pearls does the fish sack cost, you might ask. 
Well, my good friend, it's nothing too crazy. It is a very, very reasonable, in my opinion, 1,000 mulch pearls. And I will also be going for the rods, which cost 150, 120, and 100, respectively. So that's 370 extra mulch pearls. Fortunately, there is another collection log slot here called the Golden Tench. I believe there's a 1 in 20,000 chance of getting a Golden Tench. And if you're wearing the rod as blessing like I am, there is a chance to double it. And you can trade that in for 100 mulch pearls. So if you get lucky and you nab a Golden Tench, that is a 10 tenth of your grind cut off but it is one in 20,000 which is quite rare uh, I don't know exactly how many fish on average you have to catch to get the fish sack I guess 75,000 so probably see like three or four golden tenches on the way there so that'll cut it down that'll cut it down a little bit also some of y'all might be wondering what the XP per hour is like here since it is so intense you imagine it'd be pretty good right well actually you're correct I'm getting about 76,000 fishing XP per hour over a hundred thousand hunter XP per hour and over 20,000 cooking XP per hour, totaling up to almost 200,000 XP per hour, which is really, really good for pretty much any skill. There's not a ton of skills that have methods with over 200k XP per hour, although this one is super click intensive and my finger is already hurting and I've only been here for 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, I can imagine this is quite strenuous and I might not be able to grind it for too long every single day, but I'll knock out a little bit every now and then. This will help me a lot towards my 1 billion experience point goal. Oh yes, that is exactly what I've been looking for. I've been doing Konar for so long, just waiting for this task. 143 Hydras. We're doing Hydra to get ourselves a Dragon Hunter Lance, obviously. We're halfway to the drop rate. Of course, we've gotten the Jar of Chemicals three leathers, two tails, and almost a full ring so far. So I think this task could be the one where you pull out the Hydra's Claw. If not, I mean, at least we're still doing Hydra. The boss just dumps GP into your pockets. I was really shocked when I saw the collection log pop up. I thought, no way. But yeah, actually, we got our alchemical Hydra heads. I can't believe we haven't gotten a pair until now. This is for the uh, Hydra Slayer helmet, I believe. And we just got our first pair at 538. What is the drop rate of those? Editor Shelby. Put it on the screen because I'm not Googling it. Taking a bit of a break from Hydra to make some molten glass. I've got a lot of buckets of sand and a ton of giant seaweed in the bank. 27,000 giant seaweed. I really should not have gotten that much because that means I am cursed to mine like an insane amount of sandstone. And honestly, I don't really like mining sandstone. But I've got like 30,000 buckets to process. I need something to do while I'm AFKing. And I think blowing molten glass is a good idea. So let's stack it up. And I believe that is the last of the molten glass. I could stand here and pick some up off the ground. But honestly, I don't think it's worth it to do that. The amount of time you spend picking it up, you could just be casting the spell again and so on and so forth. So there's 41.5 thousand molten glass. That's about 3 million crafting XP worth of molten glass, which is awesome. That means we will easily pass over the 30 mil mark for crafting. And uh, I don't know, it's just kind of neat. It's a good thing for me to do in the AFK time. So when I'm just chilling and I need something to do on the side, boom, I pop this out, start blowing some empty light orbs and just uh, just chill. And real quick, I want to turn in my spirit seeds. Oh, it is such a great time turning these in. We've got 12 right now. I recently got a drop of three from Hydra, which is just so good. And now we get to see how many herb seeds I get from these 12 seed packs. And there we go. In 12 seed packs, we got, well, a lot of herbs. Definitely enough for a couple herb runs, at least. I will take it. And once again, a real quick shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring the video. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the game. You can play on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. And if you use that link to download it, you get yourself a free bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, premium account, boosters, and much more. Thank you so much, War Thunder, for sponsoring the video. And so I think this is where I'm going to be ending the video off. I do hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, you know, press like, subscribe, all that fun stuff that supports the channel. And if you really are enjoying these super long hardcore Iron Man videos, let me know. I could go back to doing 20 minute videos, which means I could upload these more frequently. Or I could keep doing the long form like 40 to 60 minute videos that I'm doing now, which are pretty fun and good for viewing in like a long lazy session. If you're like playing RuneScape, you can just keep it open on the side. I don't know. I want to know what y'all prefer. Thank you so much once again for watching. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Goodbye.